Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today we are going to take a look at one of the most beautiful cars in the world. I'm going to take you on a walk around and then a test drive in the Aston Martin Vanquish Zagato. It is one of just 99 of these in the world of the coupe. There are also 99 roadsters but it's a big thanks to the owner of this car for allowing me to come down today and show you the car inside and out and let me go for an experience taking this out onto some rather nice roads here in Germany. So we're going to take a look around it. It's kind of interesting to me of course as a Vanquish owner what the Zagato version is all about. So let's get started with a little bit of a walk around and take it in because outside of I think the 177 this is probably the most beautiful car to me that exists. It is stunning in terms of how it's designed. The regular Vanquish is already beautiful and Zagato bring into this their sort of distinct um, features and highlights, the double bubble roof that I'll show you in a moment, but basically have made the Vanquish look even more just rounded and stunning in terms of design and there are some really cool and trick features like if you see this rear light back here the way that's made it's just amazing so this car in black with the sort of chromed touches that you can see there are some carbon fiber parts and then some colored highlights on the inside but it's based around the six liter v12 one of the best sounding engines ever it has 600 horsepower slightly up from the 576 in the regular uh, vanquish 0 to 62 miles an hour in the coupe 3.5 seconds in the roadster or the uh, volante it is 3.7 seconds but 600 horsepower 670 newton meters of torque and it sounds good mark my word for it these exhaust pipes at the back the quad pipes you've got make a very very nice noise so just looking around it let's come in and talk about that double bubble roof it's been an iconic part of Zagato in Italy's designs Zagato the coach builder of course we've seen some of their cars before and they've had a long relationship with Aston Martin going back to the DB4 GT Zagato some more recent projects uh, the DB7 Zagato the DB AR1 and then they worked together for this the 99 coupes and the 99 roadsters around at the front you've got this enlarged grille it's made wider and you can see this kind of distinct Z pattern in so many places around this car this shaping to the grille it's actually really quite neat if you come and look at how 3d that is um, you've got the red uh, badging on the bonnet and the very very metallic sparkly paintwork on this car you can see the silver metallic flake there glistening away so looking around lots of carbon fiber parts that you can see in visible carbon so the splitter um, the vents on the bonnet but in fact the entire body is carbon so just like the regular vanquish the whole body is carbon fiber uh, reinforced with plastic but basically very very lightweight body panels the distinct Zagato Z worn on the wings there. More carbon, visible carbon. I've got to stop saying just carbon because it's all carbon. The whole car, as you come around to the back, you've got those same grills around the light. But just look at this design. Look, look at that. That is just, I, I don't know, that is a really cool touch. I like it a lot. You've got a, a little sort of wing that will rise here at speed at the rear of the hatch. Um, and yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just a really, really nice car it's just so well proportioned and so neatly sort of designed and shaped but let's just come back round and step into the inside uh, and i'll show you in there so we've got the uh, familiar aston glass crystal key which is always very neat unlock the car open the doors the swan doors that open sort of hinging slightly upwards as you pull them out where you're greeted by the Vanquish Zagato door sill plaque, number 29 of 99. On the inside here, you've got the Aston Martin's 177 steering wheel, the slightly squared off steering wheel that was an option on uh, Vanquish's. And you've got these sort of bronzy gold highlights around the airbag on there and on the center sort of waterfall for the infotainment controls that are a kind of neat touch throughout. Looking backwards though, you've got all this Z quilting, the Zagato quilting, the Zagato embroidery on the headrest and this car really is this kind of bespoke special configuration coach built uh, Aston Martin by Zagato uh, if we fold the seats forward you can see it's technically two plus two but not the most space in the world in the back um, and I'll show you in the hatch shortly as well but let me just step in for a second because I want to fire the car up it's one of the most beautiful sounding engines you will ever hear The 
rumbles and burbles of that noise are just glorious. And then the screen folds up where you've got a little bit of information. You can see the sort of track display. Naturally, the air conditioning is blowing at me strongly because it's very, very warm outside today. Let's just turn that down. And I'm gonna come around and show you in the engine bay as well. Pull the flap just there, just to have a look at the uh, power plant in here. It's running the rear wheels. There we go, six liter V12 from Aston Martin. Naturally aspirated how it should be. Just pure, glorious engine. And the final inspection plate there. Phil Jeffries on this car, number 29. And, uh, let's just pull this down. Give it a little drop into place. Yes, so this is the Vanquish Zagato. Pop open the uh, rear hatch just quickly to show you in here. Luggage space, practical for the road. You've got this really nice leather pouch um, for your emergency bits and pieces on the roadside. Um, shouldn't need those, and even a nice umbrella that comes built into the car there too. And this out here, you can see the sort of carbon fiber of the bodywork. Um, if I could just get in a little bit closer so you can see this, it's all raw carbon, well, finished, visible carbon, but that's the uh, underneath. And then this has a nice soft close as well. So it closes down gently and smoothly. So it's one of the most beautiful looking cars in the world, but I think I should jump back in because it's a car that I really feel I need to take out for a little drive to tell you a little bit more about because this is the Vanquish Zagato. This is so special. It is so beautiful to look at. There are only 99 in the world. Let's jump in and go experience it on the road. Gently on the move then in true grand touring splendor. The Vanquish is such a good GT car and obviously being based on that, this carries through that same sense of elegance and style and luxuriousness in here. The things you're holding, the 177 style steering wheel, the rev counter that goes the opposite direction, just the materials and the finish and the way it looks. And it's just such a nice place to be. The inside of the Vanquish is so, so good when you're out on the road. It's comfortable. The seating position is slightly oddly high, I'll give it that. Um, um, and this is exactly the same, but that's a pretty small thing at the end of the day when you just think about what you're in and what you're driving and the style with which it does it. And just cruising along gently right now in drive, we've got the eight-speed ZF gearbox as before. It's comfortable and smooth. It's basically easy. I'm in sport mode. You could take it out of sport mode and the exhaust valves would open up later and it would be even sort of smoother. You've got independent adaptive suspension control um, so we can stiffen up the dampers. I'm gonna put it into sport, uh, put it stiffer on the dampers and start using the manual gearbox to drop down some gears. Just so much torque in third gear just gently kind of wafting away and then the valves open and you listen to that noise just building the revs gradually it's incredible that sound I, I almost didn't know what to say there it's that good it's a little bit louder than the vanquish not than my vanquish downshifts just heavenly i'm just jaw to the floor at the sound of this thing one of the best sounds you could imagine. And driving it's similar, of course, to Vanquish, the same kind of setup with the adaptive uh, dampers, firmer. You've got a really nice turn and it drives super, super well. So when you're out on a nice sort of twisty road, actually, genuinely, it's a car that will take you by surprise for the size of it, for the weight of it. Even with the carbon fiber body, it is still a heavy car. Um, it does drive remarkably well. And then, like I said, <laughs> that is the sound of heaven. That is one of the best sounding V12s ever. The noise, the shift noise, the way it travels through the cabin. I'm in dreamland right now. This is one of my favorite cars in the world and it costs just over 600,000 pounds, give or take. It's about European price, about 800,000 euros. 99 of them, plus the 99 Roadsters, uh, making 198 cars in total. 600 horsepower, maybe not the biggest number these days, but this car isn't about that. This car isn't chasing the numbers. It's about the beauty and what it stands for, what it represents, and the history and heritage of that Aston Martin Zagato relationship. The fact that if you go back to the DB4 GT Zagato, those cars are worth nearly 10 million pounds now because they are so highly sought after with that distinct styling and presence that the thing has from the start. I'm just gonna just, just, 
this symphony, pure, pure orchestral symphony, as the revs build up. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's just a glorious, glorious sound in a car that you feel so, when you're driving, you just feel classy. You feel like you're driving a beautiful thing. You feel like you're at home. You feel like you're in something that's really, really special. And I mean, just to run over the small sort of negatives, I guess, from my experience, V12 engine, that obviously means you're gonna be using a lot of fuel. But this car, you're probably not gonna be taking it on huge, huge long trips. The seating position that's a bit high, you don't have that much in terms of movement to where you can put it. It might be sometimes a little bit nicer to be kind of lower and slightly further back. Um, and then those two plus two seats behind are totally and utterly useless. Um, that's not what this car is about at all. But that is a massive, massive pro about this car and the sound of it. I mean, it's this this sort of limited edition collection side. You know, these kind of cars, most of the Vanquish Staccatos will probably not do that many miles out on the road. So a huge thanks to the owner for allowing me this opportunity to drive in this car. Um, obviously, due to the value, I'm not driving it like a lunatic that's that's definitely not on the agenda at all but I am having an awesome time in this because it's about appreciating it and what it is and what it represents and the history and heritage and that connection and the bespoke side of it how you can customize the car in your dream configuration how you can sort of go through this whole VIP process with Aston Martin he says just putting my foot down a little bit Utterly brilliant. This is almost certainly the most heavenly sound you're going to hear today without any shadow of a doubt. And it just goes on and on. That noise. It's so cool. It's so cool. Now, I'm going to draw actually one big complaint about the Vanquish Segato that I haven't mentioned up to this point, And that is the visibility in the rear view mirror. You can't see anything. That double bubble roof goes all the way back down towards the rear of the boot, and then there's a leather parcel shelf back there too, giving you the tiniest little slit out of the back window, and all you can see is the tarmac right behind you. So there's a car following me at the moment at a sensible distance, but I can't see it. So if you want to see backwards, you better not drive one of these. If, however, you don't care about what's behind you because you're driving in an Aston Martin Zagato, that doesn't matter, as a KTM crossbow goes the other way. That's rather unusual. Um, anyway, this is truly special. It feels like such an incredible place to be. I mean, it's familiar on the inside from the Vanquish. Maybe a little bit more could be done to differentiate from that than just the sort of gold touches, the bronzy touches. Um, but I'm not gonna complain overall because it's the fact that it's this bespoke coach-built car. What it stands for, what it is, is just something out of this world. So I'm very, very happy. I'm gonna pull over and uh, show you some more little bits around the car. Alas, great things come to an end, but before I step out of the car, let me show you a little bit more around it, if you're not sort of familiar um, with the Vanquish. So we've got the Bang & Olufsen speakers, which are the tweeters that rise up out of the dashboard, and when you turn it off, they uh, sit back down, which is such a classy touch. Then if I come in here on the dashboard, you can see that opposite um, rev counter that spins anti-clockwise rather than clockwise, which is rather unusual, but it's stylish in the sort of silver finish. Um, and the updated sort of font styles that they've got. Then on the steering wheel, you've got your volume and your uh, controls there, the suspension button, sport button, um, cruise control on the other side. The shifter paddles on the back, sometimes I feel they could be ever so slightly bigger, but they're fixed to the column, uh, not with the wheel, and do the job pretty well. That gearbox in here really is very, very good. Then on the waterfall in the center console, you've got the uh, slot for the emotional control unit, your park reverse, neutral and drive. Um, your controls for the air conditioning and climate control, and then you've got your uh, media infotainment sort of settings here, which brings us to a number of displays on the kind of folding up screen, which you can just about see with all the glare from the sun. Sorry about that, and this is my favorite with the uh, power meter. Uh, when we get through the warning about track use only, where it shows you, uh, you know, how much power you're using. So if I give it a gentle blip there, you can see the revs and that side of things, which is quite neat on that display. Um, in the armrest, you've got a nice uh, ashtray here, just a nice sort of item um, in what would otherwise be the um, cup holder, or if you fold this out, the twin cup holder. Nice sort of touch from owning one of these, <laughs> knowing how that works. Armrest for your USB and that kind of things. Um, and then around the, here, you've just got your sort of familiar uh, Zagato stitching that I showed you earlier. 
and a cubby hole but in the back of the seats which is interesting you don't get that on the volante uh, just on the coupe but what i was saying earlier about that rear visibility you see that you see that tiny little slit for a rear window um yeah needless to say that doesn't work too well uh for viewing backwards but if you do turn your head around you do get a glimpse of the carbon fiber there on the uh, window which is quite nice as well just seeing that on the inside and then this car has the sort of full leather headliner that's uh, <laughs> quite nice to touch not that you would often do so um sun visors these tiny little sun visors um but given how raked the front window is they actually work rather well anyway so that's more or less all there is to show you on the inside you've got the fly-off handbrake so um handbrake works on that side and drops back down and then you take it off back down as well and then your controls for fuel cap opening the boot and your windows all here on the door and um if you didn't know by the way that's the martin seat controls on the inside on the center column and then the passenger ones are just here um, where you've got all your memory and your lumbar and multiple different ways you can move everything and this this is quite a neat little thing so along the bottom launch control traction hazards then here you have a pen did you know that there was an aston martin pen in the dashboard of an aston martin my uh, old vantage used to have one of those i think it's really really cool how that works Nice little uh, little touch, but let us turn it off. Silence in here. And step out. Oh, there was the nice Z. I don't know if you saw that. The Z on the uh, display screen. It's the Gato display. Let's step out for a moment to just have one sort of final wander around the car and look at it because it's a work of art. It's truly an Italian-designed work of art based on brilliance of an Aston Martin and that really makes it one of my favorite cars um, I mean the rarity the exclusivity how special it is may not have the most highest performance in the world with only if I can say only 600 horsepower but it has the looks it has the sort of wow factor it has the presence and as the Sun comes back out on it now if I just come around at the paintwork again I'm not normally a fan of black paintworks but with the metallic flake in this it looks really nice and the satin black paint contrasting with the satin silver on the wheels makes for a nice look too ceramic brakes of course and just generally a very very special car so pretty awesome to be able to get a close look well and drive in the Vanquish Segato um, yeah just taking it all in still as we come round but really really awesome car and I have thoroughly enjoyed this so guys I hope you've enjoyed the video hope you've enjoyed seeing this car and a massive thanks to the owner for allowing me to share it with you and take it for a little drive and of course a thanks to Aston Martin and Segato for bringing us such a car in the first place anyway that's it that's the Vanquish Segato one of only 99 in the world thank you very much for watching that's it for now I will catch up with you again very very soon cheers